Hello and welcome to Stamscaping 101. We're going to do a couple quick scenes here, but mostly it's just to show this interesting contraption here called, um, I don't know what this thing is called actually, it's the PTC Graphic Marker USA, uh, that was the name of the company, but this is a rechargeable um, compressed air spray bottle, okay? I, I guess you can put whatever you want in here. Um, they kind of uh, showcased it for water and not really for stamping or something like that, but I'll show you how I use it in a stamping application, okay? All right, so we have just a couple of uh, pieces of paper here. I, I'm using glossy because it'll work the best, I think, for this technique right here. And let's see, let me just get some reinker fluid here. And we'll keep this really simple. We won't go into too many different colors or different color schemes. I, I guess we could, but we'll just keep this really simple. Just applying some reinker ink with a paper towel. All right. There's all kinds of different ways to use Stampscape stamps, you know, and I don't know if I've ever used it like this for this application, but it just comes to show you there's no set rules. Stamps are images, and uh, they're not bound by certain types of techniques, at least not, not Stampscape stamps. There might be ones that are kind of those layered types where you layer one stamp over another, and those ones, you know, you have to use in a certain type of a combination of I don't know, whatever methodology, but uh, um, backgrounds are backgrounds, and, you know, there's different types of, uh, you know, backgrounds in nature, but also you can interpret them in so many different ways in art, too. So, that being said, no rules. I'm just kind of wiping on some paper. It's almost like that faux type of uh, surface, you know, with... Uh, um, kind of interior decorative painting and whatnot, you know, to get those different types of textures on your wall. Or you might have done this on, I don't know, some different types of crafting projects or whatnot. You might say, oh my gosh, I didn't know you could do that with uh, stamping. You can do anything you want, really. Um, okay, those are two different types of ink. There's the Distress Ink, that one's Blueprint Sketch, Mermaid Lagoon, we have Broken China here. This one's the lightest one. Now I'm just layer, I'm putting a pretty good layer of ink down on this uh, surface here just because what I plan on doing is that kind of, you know, um, water bleaching, you know, it's not really bleaching, but, uh, well, I don't know, is it bleaching? It's not using bleach, but it's going for that type of look of applying some water to this and it just kind of lifting um, some of that tone off of the surface of your paper. Let's get a little bit of a, let's see, dusty Concord, Concord? In the city of Concord, <laughs> they always uh, correct you or anyone in that area. It's Concord, not Concord. It's like the city I grew up in, Lompoc, but everyone says Lompoc. If you know, if you're not from around there. Okay, so applying that down. Let's I don't know. Let's go for some different types of textures here on this one. Let's not make them. Uh, I don't know, identical. Okay, we well, can just take a look and see what happens here. You can do some little swiping if you want to. This is really fun. I mean, it's, I don't know, just ink layering. It's not, I mean, some of it might be physically mixing on the surface, but for the most part, you're layering one ink over the top of another like that. And what I'm finding here is that um, as I do this, it starts to become a little bit, uh, here's a Caribbean blue from Marvy. Let's take a look at that one. Um, it's kind of layering transparent dyes over one another. And when you do that, you get what they call kind of, especially if you're using analogous colors, um, this kind of color glow working. And that's putting um, colors that are right next to each other on the color wheel. Um, it's next to, but it's really over the top and that creates this color glow, okay? It's not physically glowing, you're not gonna put it in, you know, 
a dark closet and it's going to glow, but um, visually, uh, with that reflected light off the surface, it'll give the impression of this kind of glowing sensation. You know, if there's, uh, there's different properties to colors, um, complementary colors across from each other on the color wheel create a color um, vibration. So, anyway, so we have that right there, kind of a rich, deep kind of tapestry. It almost looks like it's underwater, doesn't it? All right, so we have that. Let me see, I, I guess I need to remove my paper here with the next thing I'm going to do here. Okay, just temporarily. All right, so here's my little bottle here. I haven't used this in, I don't know, 30 years probably or something like that. School days, okay? And what you do is you pump this up like this, and I can tell it's just a few pumps I filled it up to about right here, as per the instructions. I filled it up, like, back then, too. So this, this bottle here might be, I don't know, this bottle of water might be, this might be 25-year-old water, for all I know. Okay, and what that does is it um, charges up this bottle of, like, compressed air. So you have this water in here, and you just take this, and you spray just like a, you know, aerosol spray or something, okay? Just go like that. I, I kind of hit the top portion of it. And on this one, let's go a little bit less. Let's just hit it a couple times with a couple short bursts. Okay. Actually, that was three. All right. So let me... This is why I move this here. I got my surface here kind of wet. All right. So the reason why us... I don't know, whatever, art students that happen to see this. You didn't see these bottles around. Um, Graphic Marker USA um, was this kind of a smaller company. They were the first ones that I saw that sold um, alcohol-based markers instead of like the heavy xylene-based and you know, super toxic smelling uh, types of paper uh, uh, markers. Um, add markers, whatnot. Okay, let's see what's happening here. And let's see if you can see what's going on. Can you see that uh, kind of texturing that's happening there? Let me hold this up here. A little bit more. It's kind of happening. Look at that. It looks like it's been bleached out though, right? But it's just water, and that's what can happen with dye-based inks, okay? Dye-based inks are water-based. This one's one where, that I really hit it heavy, so I probably... I haven't used that bottle in so many years, but... Look at that. Wouldn't that be a fantastic kind of setting to stamp um, your water-based imagery over the top of? Or you could stamp them on something else and then paste them here, like with a pop-up style. Look at that. Okay, but anyways, going back to this bottle, well, why don't you just use, like, a spray bottle like this, okay? Which, I mean, you could. I mean, that's what we were doing at, like, the conventions. We were spraying, like, things like stamp board to give them a little bit of texture. But something like this, what you're doing is you're spraying like that, and it's coming out in different strengths, you know, during this, you know, this motion right here, okay? For something like this, it's all pressurized, so when you hit this, it's coming out at the same pressure. So we used to spray things like um, our, especially for like watercolor painting class, you'd spray your surface, you know, and get it ready to, to paint on. So I think, I think that was mainly the thing that I was using it for um, in school was uh, watercolor um, classes, painting classes, and like life drawing and whatnot, where you want to kind of get things kind of uh, established a little bit um, early on. You never know what you're going to get with these. Let's heat that, say this a little bit. Now once you heat set, it's, it's going to um, stop the um, texturizing process, if that's what you call it, or the ink lifting process, whatever, uh, that bleaching out look, okay? But I think that's gone, you know, far enough.
have it soaked. This one like soaked through to the back side of it, but you know, just heat set it and you're, you're gonna be fine. All right, and just take your imagery and you can stamp over it in a nice juicy dye based ink. Or what I thought I might use is uh, my Brilliance Fast Drying Pigment Ink. It's very, very dark. And let's just see what this looks like right here. If I don't have to re-ink my Brilliance pad. I was telling someone um, that was using their um, Brilliance pads. Normally, with all other types of ink pads, you don't have to ink them up so fast, fast or much. Like, maybe a stays-on, right? Brilliance inks are kind of like the stays-on of the pigment ink world, okay? They have like a fast drying um, type of component in them. I'm gonna wipe off some of the bottom of this one. And let's go about like so. Okay, let's take a look at that texture again. You get your own kind of unique textures. And, and as you saw, you know, when I was applying that ink, you really don't have to do anything so particular or careful or whatnot. I think even if you did, you would get, uh, in the manner that I was um, applying it, I don't think you'd get the same thing twice anyway. So, kind of embrace the, I don't know, whatever, the ver variation and chance. Okay, get that. We'll take this and we'll overlap right over here to carry that out to the edge. All right. Take this one and overlap right down here. Okay, we have this right here. Okay, and let's take some different foreground imagery. Apply this. I should do uh, this for my mood and media series. It's kind of a fun texture in that sky, isn't it? And you can add th some things up there. It's not like, okay, well. You're doing this different technique right here. Now you can't use your white paint pen or something like that. Why not? And you can also go back in. I mean, now that we've got that texture in the background, you could go in here and add more ink. You know, let's say you want to give it a stronger vignette or give some shading down here into the, uh, the imagery down there. You could do it. You know, it'd be kind of interesting too. Maybe it'd be too textural. Is if you took this with already that texture in the sky and hit it with some splatter painting up here. I just want these cards to go real fast though, in terms of this uh, um, video here. So just a quick, I don't know, little memory lane type of a uh, thing with this uh, bottle here. I don't know if you can get it still. I, I kind of looked on Amazon. I didn't know what to look up, but uh, um, there are some mist bottles like for hairspray or something like that, but, uh, you know, they're the pump style. See this right here? Little stars like that. Put some down here in the water for your reflections. Okay. And that is fun. Oops. To do. All right. This one right here, it's really kind of bent and whatnot because this really got soaked with uh, a lot of ink. Okay, now this is a, another reason why I did this on the glossy, because if I did it on matte, it, you might get some bleaching out, you know, or something like that, but with the glossy, um, the inks are sitting on the surface a little bit more. They do soak in and stain, but they sit on the surface a little bit more than a matte, you know, something that's not coated at all. So, um, you know, I don't know if it would have uh, kind of, you know, spread out like that quite as much. But maybe you don't want it as, you know, kind of severe or anything like that. It just gives it a different look. But it doesn't mean that it isn't good. I think it's all good. Okay. Certainly a very fast technique. And I've seen papers that are sold with that type of texturing in the background. You can make it. I mean, that took like, I don't know, a couple minutes to do. Um, you can do all kinds of things, you know, with that type of look. Just ink it up and just spray it. OK, 
Okay, this is just using my spruce large, and you can do a pretty dramatic looking scene. Wouldn't that be perfect for a little uh, quote up there? Um, let's try a couple different trees for different um, kind of spatial uh, line weight. Pine trees are often, you know, often different types in a given area what I call it it's not like monoculture you know with uh, trees there's often different types growing amongst each other complementing each other like so okay and uh, throw some birds or something back there in yours and uh, you know it'll give it kind of a, a cooler look all right, and you can add some stars up here again. Maybe add some bigger ones, some bolder ones, you know, because that texture in the background is so, you know, visually loud. Maybe you have to kind of add uh, larger stars kind of in here, or you can make it snow. If you put these dots in front of the trees, then it kind of becomes snow. It represents snow. If you have this just only in the background like that, and it usually represents stars. Usually. That's what it would visually reference, uh, I think, for the most part. All right, so anyways, just the, I don't know, what do you call it? Water, water bleaching, maybe, or something like that? The water bleaching technique, okay? Uh, like I said, I just found this, but we used to use just one of these. You know, squirt, squirt. But if you do it kind of, I would tighten it down a little bit just so you're not squirting out like a stream or just, you know, test it out on something, you know, test it out on, a, you know, paper towel somewhere, you know, a bigger one or something like hold it and just squirt it just so you get kind of a, a good idea that you're not going to be spraying a stream and just tighten this down enough to where it's just, you know, doing kind of a fine stream. So almost closed, I would say, and then hit it. So you might hit it like that. Like start off here and you go squeeze across that one or you hit it like this up here and you just go with just a barely like an eighth of an inch you go squirt squirt you know squirt so it just goes tss, tss, like that all right I don't know if it makes that you know that sound effect but uh, I think you get the point okay so two cards right there bleaching technique what do we have we have color variation I, you know I think some reasonable and not a lot of color depth you know but you can I don't know can you see the purplish tinge and there's that other type of blue a little bit more of that pinkish I didn't use like a pink you know that was that one I don't even remember what color it is I think that's a, I don't know, one of the first times I've used that one it was a dusty con concord concord whatever it's not the city but um so, and then you certainly have a lot of texture up here, and this one has even more texture. It has that kind of watery color look because I hit it and really, you know, gave it a kind of a soaking up here, you know. So you have all those different variations. And see that right there where you have that nice kind of bleeding out of the color where it kind of forms around like that. I think that looks good, you know. It's all part of that different type of look or texturing that can happen. You do it with like kind of like a more of a like a swiping type of application where it looks more like northern lights and then spray it, you know? I don't know. You can have it kind of smooth in one area. Like say, let's, we just sprayed it up in the sky and not in the water. You know what I mean? For variation or, you know, go with a bigger paper so you can have um, different types of textures over here than from over here, you know, just because the, the spraying and where you kind of target that type of texturing to take place within your piece. Okay, so anyways, hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, I probably have used this, you know, this water bleaching type of thing before. I don't remember, but here it is using the Graphic Marker USA spray bottle. And no, I don't know. Maybe they're, maybe they're being sold by someone else these days. It seems like they would, you know, uh, put something in here for, I don't know, the modern day when they're trying to get rid of, like, things like aerosols and stuff like that are bad for the environment, so kind of those pump spray types of things. You might be able to find it um, sold under something else, like a like a hairspray or something like that, you know, where you can pump up your own thing. It, you know, look at look up some kind of like a, 
an aerosol alternative or, or pump, uh, hand pump, I don't know, rechargeable, you know, bottle or something like that. Um, and it would be the same thing. Don't wait for a craft company to come along and kind of remarket it and, you know, boost up the price by, you know, five, five times or something like that. All right. Anyways, hope you liked the video. If you like this video, hope you hit the like button, subscribe, share, all that fun stuff, and we'll see you on the next video.